Well, good evening, everyone. Broadcasting live, February 12th. We are broadcasting a few minutes early. Today's quote is about the senses. It's a good quote. The um, translation, as always, is the translations. You know, it's really fine. It's just. Being someone who knows Pali, you got to wonder what he means by unruffled. Ajatang ambya seka sukang patisang Uh, unsullied. I don't know about the whole unruffled thing. Happiness of being unruffled. I think it's the happiness that is unsullied. It's an unsullied happiness. That's what Bhikkhu Bodhi, how Bhikkhu Bodhi translates it. So we'll go with Bhikkhu Bodhi's translation. On seeing a form with the eye, he does not grasp at its signs and features. This is an important quote that I often bring up. Nanimita gahi nananubhyanjana gahi. So jakuna rupang diswa, having seen a form of the eye. Nanimita gahi nanubhyanjana gahi. So what does this mean? Well, when it's a, um, it's actually a criticism that we get from time to time about using a mantra, using a word to remind ourselves of the experience because it feels like you're not really getting deep into the experience. But when you see something and you say seeing, seeing, it's, it actually stops you from getting deep into it, from actually experiencing it. And it's criticism by other Buddhists who think that, well, this, you can't really understand something unless you get deep into it, and the words get in the way. But the words, that's it, the words are designed to get in the way, and that's based on what the Buddha is saying here in the Majjhima Nikaya. So, Nanimita Gahi, when seeing a form with the eye, one doesn't grasp at the sign. And I've talked about this before. We had this a couple of days ago, I think. So, Nimita is a characteristic, or a uh, sign is a good word. It's just we don't use it in English, really, but... Um, when you see a human being, as I said, you, you, how you know it's a man or it's a woman is by the sign of a man or the sign of a woman, the, the hint or the characteristic, something that creates or, or induces recognition, that's a man, that's a woman. When you see an apple, that which tells you it's an apple and not an orange, when the moment you, you, you get that it's an apple, that's a, a nimitta. And, and beyond that, there is the the uh, the sign of beauty and the sign of ugliness. And so there's the sign of of that which is desirable. And and uh, when you when you grasp that, when you get yourself to the point of seeing it something as beautiful, then desire will arise. 
So this is what we want to avoid. When you see something, you see a person, and you say to yourself, seeing, seeing, the person doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't get to the point of a person. It doesn't go further to the point of beautiful or ugly. And someone you like or dislike, when you say seeing, seeing, that doesn't, that part of the, the chain doesn't arise because you've, um, you've broken the chain. Anubhyanjana, are, are, it's another, you know, it's another aspect of this. Anubhyanjana means the particulars. It's really saying the same thing in two different ways. But Anubhyanjana means particulars. So we don't want to know the particulars. Not interested, because the particulars are where the danger comes. So the Buddha says next, Yatva dikaranam me nang chakundriyang asamutang. Having not, when the, when the eye faculty is not uh, guarded, asamutang, viharantang, dwelling with the eye unguarded. One dwells with the mind unguarded. Evil, unwholesome states of covetousness, covetousness and grief might invade him. It's the key. This is where likes and dislikes come. This is where uh, pleasure and displeasure come from. This is where addiction and aversion, these habits that we cultivate, that make us greedy, that make us angry, create frustration and boredom that create fear and that create worry that create addiction and create withdrawal disappointment not getting what you want getting what you don't want all this trouble that we have in our lives it's all created by grasping at uh, signs in particular So when we try, when you see something, we try to say to ourselves, seeing, remind ourselves that seeing. Otherwise it becomes beautiful or ugly. And sounds at the ear. The problem is that we're taught in society to look for the good sounds and the good sights. It's actually, this kind of, of talk is highly unwelcome for most people now to talk about beauty as though there was something wrong with that as though we should see things uh, look beyond beauty and see beautiful things without noticing how beautiful they are spirituality we, we, spiritual teachers or spiritual practitioners often make this mistake and they think you know this whole idea of stopping to smell the roses as though there was something beneficial about smelling roses. University, it's um, surprising. I guess it speaks to the age of age group, but I would say somewhere around fifty percent of the un of the undergraduate students at the university have these earbuds in their ears, like in between classes all the time. They come to do meditation. I, today I did a five-minute five minute meditation all day. Uh, so people would come and, and I'd give them a five-minute meditation lesson. And most of them, most of them had to take the earbud out of their ear before they sat down. It's really, really a thing. We can't live in, in the world. It's, it's bizarre for those of us who walk down the street and are in the world hearing the ordinary sounds. One of my classmates said she, 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 what did she say? Something about singing, singing in the shower. And I said, you sing in the shower? And he said, oh yeah, I have to have music. In the, and I said, you have music in the bathroom? <laughs> it's an, apparently a thing. Um, and it was like, yes, I think music in the bathroom is important for a, sorry, I shouldn't, she may, she may end up watching this. She's a really good person. Um, when I, she, we're working together on this is the person who's helping me work on the peace symposium uh, which I haven't mentioned I don't think we're doing a peace symposium at McMaster 
people have been asking me, I don't really know what a symposium, what the word symposium means, but sort of like a peace fair. And in my mind it is actually, I don't think that's where the direction that the peace studies program wants us to go. But uh, I want it to be a healing uh, experience where people come together and, and, you know, I mean like a peace, uh, an active peace process where people come and they, they leave knowing more about peace, having skill, learned skills about cultivating peace. Anyway, sorry, a little bit off track there. But um, it's a thing, no? We, we want to hear want to hear beautiful music, beautiful sounds. A lot of people ask whether you can meditate to music, which, you know, it shows this misunderstanding about spirituality. I mean, from a Buddhist point of view, anyway. Of course, a lot of people would say the Buddhists have got it wrong, so to each their own. Smells, we want to smell good things. It's the nature of wanting to, to experience good things that you cultivate partiality. It's like a pendulum. If you pull it one way, you're creating the, uh, with the, this, the, the potential, potential energy. The more you pull, the more potential until finally you let go and it will swing back. You create the opposite. You create the aversion with the attraction. You become more irritable, more dissatisfied, more prone to uh, disappointment, more prone to anger. This is why people fight. And those people who are steeped in sensual pleasure have so much sensual pleasure end up being the ones who fight the most fight with each other, bicker with each other, argue with each other. So much conflict comes from sensuality, comes from that which is supposed to make us happy. Right? We go to war over our happiness. It's the truth of it. So when we smell good smells, we want to smell the roses, we don't want to smell bad smells. And it seems so ingrained in the, in the experience where you think a bad smell is a bad smell, it's bad, right? This is the first myth that we have to dispel. The, the bad is a, a, a product of the, the particulars of the smell. If it's just smell, if you say smelling, smelling, it's just a smell. Same goes with taste. Good taste, bad taste. It's easy to get caught up in tastes. But it's also very easy, if you know how, to free yourself, to avoid that whole world of addiction and aversion. If you say to yourself, tasting, tasting. All of this, seeing, seeing with sensuality, with sexuality, with romance, see a beautiful person, seeing, seeing, it's just, it's just seeing. You cut it off totally. First you have to be uh, di diligent, of course. It's not something that just, you can break off with one go. It's, some, it's a habit that you build. Eventually it becomes a habit to see things just as they are. And that's the habit we want to cultivate. When you can do that, you, you move towards letting go. So, a really good quote. Um, not so much more to say. Except we could talk about this happiness that is unsullied or, or unadulterated. Um, so it's the difference between happiness that is based on partiality because it's dependent on X and not Y or not, not X. As opposed to the happiness that is free from uh, reliance or dependence on experience. Happiness that comes from being free from letting go, from freedom from stress, freedom from the um, concern about the experience. 
anyway. So that's our Dhamma for today. Nobody joined me on the Hangout today. It must be because last night I didn't have one. You can go ahead. Oh, I know, because I didn't post the Hangout. You can't join me. Right, there's a step missing here. Sorry. Here, there's the Hangout. Is there anybody around who wants to join? Only join if you want to ask a question. If you have a question, join me, ask it in the Hangout. Larry, do you have a question? Um, no, I, I've been listening to the um, to the Dharma talk, and I just noticed that the um, the link to this call in showed up, so I clicked on it. I, I was I've been wondering if I should have seen the link earlier. Yeah, I forgot the, to post it. <laughs> and I I presume that. Um, a, a, a link, a prior link to a, a previous call would not work for this call. No. Okay. <clears throat> Everyone is uniquely coded or whatever for the internet. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so I listened to your talk and, uh, and clicked on the link to the call in as soon as I saw it. But, but I do have a question. You, mm -hmm. you, um, you sparked a, a question in me. Um, when, we, when we're just no, essentially noting, seeing, seeing, <clears throat> smelling, mm. uh, hearing, uh, and of course those are based on the, uh, the sense doors, uh, the eyes, ears, nose, mouth, the, the touching. Um, so is it, is it inappropriate to just say something like sensing, sensing, and to try to get and try to tie the noting to the specific sense door, is that there's evidently value in that. Hmm. And I'm just speculating. Right. I mean, the word isn't that important. Whatever brings you close to the experience. But sensing to me is too abstract. It's not likely to bring you close to the experience. I mean, mm -hmm. the bare experience. Right. Not, um, it's a bit abstract. Mm -hmm. You don't sense something, you hear something. <laughs> yeah, good. Appreciate the clarification. I've wondered that. And, and you know, like, like you say, if you just say, try to, try to boil it down to the bare essential sensing. Mm. Uh, it isn't uh, very uh, very satisfying, and you know, notionally or intellectually, it's not a very satisfying term to use. Mm. But um, but yeah, I appreciate that. <clears throat> One thing I did want to talk about, uh, while I got your attention, everybody, uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm having a weekly. We started doing these weekly um, talks in Second Life at the Buddha Center. So if you know what Second Life is and you know where the Buddha Center is, you can come out. That's at 3 p.m. Or you can just come to the meditation site, meditation.sirimangalo.org, and listen in because I'll be simulcasting. Is that a word? simultaneously broadcasting uh, audio there so you can listen to the audio I don't know what I'm talking about yet anybody have anything they want me to give a talk on tomorrow if you come on the hangout and give me a topic I'll, I'll consider it can you give a talk on uh, dependent origination 
I actually gave one in Second Life on dependent origination. I've given several on dependent origination. Mm. You can look it up. I don't know if they're any good, but I think there's one on practical dependent origination, not second life, but there's one that's called practical dependent origination, it seems to me. Maybe it's one I did in Sri Lanka. I think it's one I did it on the Buddhist television in Sri Lanka. Yeah. I remember seeing a, a, a YouTube that you had published quite some back. I think you were in Sri Lanka, somewhere overseas. Um, about dependent origination. Hmm. I have done a couple at least. Another thing, can you talk about uh, right view? Sure. Hmm. Hmm. I have to think about that. There's different ways of talking about right view. If I can go over the different ways of looking at it. Mm -hmm. Would the difference, uh, different ways of talking about, it be um, uh, associated with, say, different sects of Buddhism? Um, you know, like the the forest tradition, or or this or that. The way they <laughs> they uh, uh, define the Noble Eightfold Path, is that what you're saying? Uh, the, the different ways of talking about right view is because the Buddha talked about it in different ways. Okay. So there's I mean, basically two kinds, mundane and, and noble. Mundane right view is useful, but it's uh, not enough. So mundane right view has to do with the, the um, law of karma and yeah, mostly the law of karma I'll, I'll take a look at it and see because there is um, right view of non-self there is right view of the truth of suffering or the four noble truths Mm. There's right view in terms of karma. Those are three that I can think of. And they're not exclusively different, but three ways of approaching approaching right view. Mm. <clears throat> so thank you, Al. That sounds like a good talk. You're welcome. <laughs> <clears throat> Bobby, did you have a question? Is that why you're here? Uh, I was just going to ask about uh, the four nutriments uh, in the Samaditi Sutta, mm -hmm. uh, how they relate to dependent origination, because I believe that that sutta is kind of, it talks about Paticca Samuppada as well as the four nutriments and the four noble truths and mm. so on. In did you say the Samaditi Sutta? Yeah. Mm. What in, are the four in the Majjhima Nikaya? Yeah. What are the four nutriments? Um, it was food, so physical food, and then mental volition, so sankara, and then uh, contact. Manosanjita asa. It's not actually, it's Manosanjita. Oh. So it's actually an intention. Mm -hmm. and, oh, yeah. and then there's Pasahara and Vinyanahara. Uh, mm -hmm. Consciousness, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that came from the Samaditi Sutta. So it shows what a scholar I am. Which one is Samaditi? Majjhima Nikaya number 12? Uh, I think it's nine. Yeah, it's number nine. Yeah. By Sari, this is sutra by Sari, sutta by Sariputta. Anyway, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. 
the arriving of craving there causes it, right? See, he's, I mean, this whole sutra is, a, sutra is about different ways of expressing the Four Noble Truths, right? Yeah. I think it says in the commentary that he's 24 different ways he is, or maybe he even says something. In 24 different ways, or some number of ways, he's he's it's the most number of times anyone's gone through the Four Noble Truths, or something like that. It's just a yeah. Special he always story. relates the topic that he's talking about back to the Noble Truth. Yeah. I mean, the Paticca Samuppada is is basically the Four Noble Truths. Is kind of the Four Noble Truths um, expanded upon. And, but even it is, even Padija Samupada is still a condensation of the Mahapatana. With the, if you really want to know about causality, there are 24 uh, bhajaya, 24 conditionalities. And it's much more complicated than just the line. I mean, Padija Samupada sounds like a line, right? It sounds like it's in a chain, but it's not really. It's quite complicated. People try to think of it as simple as just, and some people say Paticca Samupada only relates to one moment, it's only this life. You know, it's nothing to do with past lives, nothing to do with future lives. Bizarrely, they try to say that there's no, Paticca Samupada doesn't talk about past lives. Uh, but it's quite, you know, the first avijja pachaya sankhara is is past lives. I mean, it's a, it's just a way of expressing how uh, how we are born again and again based on ignorance. But ignorance is also involved with tanha. So we say tanha pachaya, uh, vedana pachaya tanha. Well, vedana only gives rise to tanha if there's avijja. So, but but. Uh, Vedana doesn't require a vijja, not in this life, right? So you experience Vedana even without a vijja, but not originally. Originally, you needed a vijja to be born. So it's not linear. So if you really want to learn about it, you should learn. Read the uh, matika of the uh, of the Mahapatana. There's a really good chant that I actually put up on my website. It's a Burmese. makes me think I was Burmese in a past life because the first time I heard this chant, I was just, just struck by it. I've never been struck by chanting before, but it was something so... It just resonated with me. And these monks from Burma had, were visiting Thailand, and they went around this the Jadia, the Indo Sutep, and... Uh, I just had to know what that was, so later I asked them, would a, a Sri Lankan monk, a, a Burmese monk, and he explained it to me. So he said, oh, that's the Mahapatana. Yeah. So, Something like that. That's, so that's the first one, hetu pachaya, when something is its cause. So a cause and a cause of hmm, something is a cause of form together with its Dhammas, oh, I can't translate this. I, I used to know how this was translated. Something is a cause when it's, I mean, this is just very, very basic, very, very brief going through how something is a cause of something else. You have to read the translation. Mm -hmm. I'll definitely check that out. There is a, um, there is a translation of the Mahapatana, at least abbreviated, I think. Anyway, that's all for tonight. Then, if there's no questions, I'm going to head off. Soti. Banti. Soti is for hello. When we say goodbye, it's <laughs> sadhu. Sadhu. <laughs>
I tried to sort that out, and I, I wasn't successful the other day. You know, honestly, it's probably okay, just the tradition. I mean, it's only the tradition I know. The <laughs> is to say hello, sadhu, is when you finish. Sadhu. Sadhu. Sadhu, Banti. <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. Thank you very much.